Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelike. Today we're going to be taking a look at Cosmos DB SQL ABI. Hi guys, I'm coming at you from on the road today. Today we'll be looking at Cosmos DB and the SQL API, which is the core API inside of Cosmos DB. So we're going to be looking at how this works and looking at it mostly in the Azure portal. I'm going to show you some code that I wrote to take the logs out of my firewall at home and then upload those into Cosmos DB. It's fairly straightforward code. And then we're going to go into the Azure portal and look at Data Explorer and talk about what you can do with the SQL API and some of the limitations of the kinds of things that you might want to consider when designing apps for Cosmos DB. So here's the code that we're going to be looking at for this particular application. Now, when we start talking about using the SQL API in Cosmos DB, it's important to understand that the SQL API in Cosmos DB is for reading data. It's not for putting data into Cosmos DB. So nothing about this code is going to be taking any kind of SQL queries and then processing them against Cosmos DB. But it does do a lot of the common things that you would expect a database to do. We're going to be establishing a, a connection and then using that connection to take data and put it into the database. And with Cosmos DB, this done fairly straightforward using an HTTP endpoint and then you use a key or you can configure all this by way of the connection string from the Azure portal. So it basically has all the parameters into a string that then the SDK parse. But this particular one, just defines the endpoint and the key. Endpoint is basically your account name and then documents.azure.com. And this is the key that will be used for that. Now, once I have my client up, then I just need to get my database connection. And then the, the database connection right here is logs. And that's the name of the database inside of my Cosmos account. And then the container is where all the documents are going to be stored. Now, this is probably the most analogous to a table in a traditional database. However, it's not exactly one-to-one -one because a container can, can contain any kind of document that you want to stick in it. There's no schema. There's no enforcement of the schema. It's basically whatever you want to stick into that container. And then that container, it becomes the queryable unit that you're going to be querying against inside of that container. So when we look at this, basically what this is doing is it's just getting stuff from a syslog. So this particular instance sets up a syslog server and then it listens for data in on the syslog server. And once it gets a new message off the syslog, if it's a particular type of filter log, which is from the firewall, it parses out that data and then enriches the, the data right here. And then it just simply adds it to Cosmos DB, which is very straightforward using this command right here, uh, container.items.create event, and then it just adds that document to the actual container that is going to be in my database. So in this particular example, my schema is going to look different depending on what the event is. Some of them will have more fields than the other, and that's on purpose, but they're all going into the same container, which is this logs container right here in the same database. So I query this, if I want to query it based on one of these enriched fields right here, reason, action, direction, protocol, destination, source IP, all those kinds of things, then some of the uh, documents that are going to be in that container are not going to have these fields. So it's not going to be able to return those documents. So that is one of the things about a, a document database that you don't get with something like a table-oriented database like you would get with SQL or something like that. So this code is very straightforward, nothing really fancy going on here. So let's go over the Azure portal and take a look at what's going on inside of the Azure portal. So I'm here in the Azure portal and I have my Cosmos DB instance right here. This is my account. And I just have a single database and a single container. But just to show you kind of what I have figured out, I'm using the serverless capacity, which basically gives me elasticity in the RUs. And that's going to be fine for this because if you look at mine down here over the last 24 hours, it's kind of bursty. Uh, I had a lot of activity here and a little bit of this, the, this morning, but nothing uh, crazy. And um, and then if you look at my hourly uh, rate, it's pretty low, it's about 700 requests per hour, which in the Cosmos context is really pretty minimal. 
can do all the cosmos can handle a lot more than that but for my purposes it's just fine and the only thing i other other thing i changed was eventual consistency because i'm not really modifying data once it's been written eventual consistency consistency is probably just fine for my purposes and for many applications that's probably going to work well too so once i have that i'm going to go over here to my data explorer now data explorer is the utility that's built inside of the cosmos db panes right here for exploring your data in a cosmos account now i have mine now i have mine configured for uh, a single database with a single container now the query boundary for data in cosmos db is the container so i can't do cross container queries in cosmos db that's important to remember because whenever you start to get data out of cosmos db it's not like a sql database where you can go across tables and join them together really everything has to be inside of a single container to query that data now the data in a container in cosmos db can be any kind of data it's document data so it can be a hierarchical data and you could have arrays of objects that are nested inside of a root object inside of your document there's all kinds of different things you can do inside of a cosmos db uh, container and there's no scheme enforcement so you can mix the kinds of documents you're storing inside of your cosmos containers and then you can query against all the documents that are contained within this container. So that's an important consideration whenever you think about how you're going to be storing your data in Cosmos DB. Now, for mine, I basically have two different kinds of documents in mine. Uh, I have just standard log items and I have different kinds of data that have been enriched on my filter log objects that are coming in. That's what my code was doing. So if I look at some of these, you'll see that this is just a filter log object right here. There's the, the these basically are the, the, the standard fields that come off of the syslog. And then these down here are the ones that I added based on the parse data from this message object right here. So it's just basically extracting those from this message and then adding them as fields right here. Um, and I misspelled destination right there. So um, I could fix that, but just for demonstration, I'm gonna leave it like that. And if I, if I look at some of those other ones right here, you can see that I'm, I have all of these um, enriched fields right here. Now, if I wanted to query for something that doesn't have that, I uh, I could look for some other kind of tag. And so if I wanted to filter where the tag is not, filter log, and then put some quotes around this, and uh, let's see what I get. And I got a, a couple of other different kind of objects here. This is Nginx logs. Um, there's some job logs here. Just some other different things in here that aren't uh, the 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 filter logs that were logs in my database. So not a lot of data here, but there is some. And if I wanted to get all the ones that were filter logs, I can just filter on that tag right here. I can modify this right here to get the filter logs. And I'm just going to run this query. And this will show me all the data that is where my filter log is equal to that. So this should be all my filter log right here. Now, uh, as I was writing this, it was sticking data in there that didn't have a destination port. It had destination port, but it didn't have the source port. So I rewrote this uh, as I was developing the, the little syslog server. I added source port and you can see that this one doesn't have it. So if I wanted to get filter log with source port on it, I could just simply um, add this uh, query right here, not equal to uh, where c dot source um, port is not null, not equal to null right here, and this will show me, this will show me filter log records where the where where it has source port on it. So there's my source and destination port, um, and there this you can see you know has records like that. So I'm again using so. Um, select star from right here now also with sql api you can do other kinds of queries you can do projections if you want and there is a bunch of data right here where it has source ip and there's not one that has a source port on it if i added um where uh, c dot source port is not null 
and I should get some data back that has source port on it. So if I'm just want to do data projections like that, I can do that with the, the Cosmos DB and then I can get data like this right here. All in all, there's a lot of things that you can do with this that are uh, similar to what you can do in a SQL database, but the, the, the SQL uh, inside of this is not as rich as what you would expect from an RD mess, but it does give you the ability to create and craft filters and then do data aggregations like summaries or uh, different kinds of things like that within the context of data uh, bases like what you see here. Now, if I come over here to query stats, uh, this is going to show me the output from my query. So this is a good way to show you query performance. So if you're struggling with developing a query and it's taking a long time to perform that query, you can come over here to kind of get some stats on why that is the case. And so this one has a request charge of 12 RUs, 12.4 RUs, and you can see that it's executing that pretty quickly and it's doing it against indexes. It's also going to show you uh, document counts. If it's got a scan documents, uh, that is basically it's got to look at the document, not just the index. So if you need to get some kind of filters uh, the, the, that are filtering on lot, lots of documents, you want to make sure that they're index fields Everything in Cosmos is indexed by default, but sometimes it has to uh, query uh, documents and, by opening the document and scanning them versus looking at the indexes. So the indexes are important. So there is a way to set those, look at those in another video. But for now, let's just keep it for uh, this particular video, looking at the queries and how these work inside of the Azure portal. If you like this content, please consider checking us out online at www.windelect.com where you can find several blog entries about topics related to Microsoft Azure and software development. And you can also subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button below and then clicking on the bell icon to receive notifications when new content becomes available. Until next time, thanks.